Yeah, we talked yeah, about it. Yeah, I was going to call him this month and take him to lunch sometime. Oh, cool. Welcome. Welcome to First Thursdays. Thank you so much. What an incredible crowd. You braved the snow to be here. Thank you. Uh, so anyway, you are at First Thursdays. We generally are here the first Thursday of every month. Uh, we have a few changes coming up. Uh, but uh, thank you so much. And I know people are still making their way in. And there's a few more seats up here, so don't be shy uh, to make it up this way. But again, uh, you're here uh, with Susamal Tulsa with our First Thursday program on the do's and don'ts of recycling. And, you know, this is definitely for the group that has been an avid recycler for all their life and new recyclers because there's still so many questions and that need to be answered. So we are set for an incredible panel here. Um, <clears throat> but before we get started, uh, we have a little thing that we do here. We take the first two minutes and introduce yourself to someone you don't know yet, you've been wanting to meet. So we're going to do two minutes, get to know somebody. Ready, go. Henson, City of Tulsa. Right. Man, you're done. <laughs> <laughs> that was easy. Yeah. <laughs> you know me. I, I said, you know, I wanted to say thank you about your schedule. Oh, that's fine. Well, that's totally no. my screw up. Oh, you know, it's a I senior moment. I'm taking a lot of those lately. I was telling, I was telling men, I'm like, is it just part of getting older or what's going on here? Because I seem to be like mixing my calendars out to my wife. So my wife just laughs at me. She goes, you need to, you know, Take, take your life down a couple notches and you know try not to be volunteering and doing so much because she goes, your brain's doing so much. She goes, you're screwing things up from there. So. We really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah, because that Broken Arrow program is going to follow the same model as everybody else. So we're trying, that's one thing we're all talking about the city is trying to keep that same model. And well, glass is a sticky point. Everybody's still on board. All the cities are still on board, with, which is great. Know, we do. I'm not avoiding it. It's, it's still good. So, so I'm glad, glad, glad Broken Arrow did. So, okay. See ya. I knew you would be. I knew you would be. Hey, we'll see it. Remember, now Corey's only giving me 10 minutes. I am going to mention your, your recycling center. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I'll, and I'll hit them, and I have a map that shows where all. No, but uh, about yeah. about yeah. this. And my deal is we're not a recycling right. center, but right. we recycle. Okay. Okay. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And then the people okay, the awesome. Thank you guys for being so friendly and social. So we have so much to go over the, uh, because we know you have lots of burning questions there. But before we get started, I, I do want to say thank you to PSO. They're our lead sponsor for First Thursdays. They've been uh, supporting us uh, for numerous years. And we couldn't do this program without PSO, along with our other uh, sponsors, Adamantine Energy, American Waste Control, that are here today, Cavanta that's here, Grog Screen Barn, The Met that is here today, uh, One Oak, their team is here, uh, Save Our Streams over there, Spirit Era Systems, TCC, uh, Center for Creativity, and PSO Win Choice. Let's give them all a round of applause. But it, it truly is their support so that we can uh, pull together these events to help educate the community around sustainability, give you a chance to meet some of the leaders and uh, get your questions answered. And it's probably, it's one of my favorite events that we do because I love to see the collaboration and the communication. And we have some younger people here today. So let's give them a round of applause for, for being here with us. Yay! All right. Um, I also want to give a thank, uh, shout out to my um, board members, and when I call your name, please stand because I have an incredible board, and they are really helping to uh, lead uh, our, our organization. So when I call your name, uh, please stand. Uh, Mike Lemus is our president now, uh, back there in the back. Um, uh, Matt Newman, a past uh, past president there. Uh, we also have Stephanie Cameron is here. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, James Williams right there. All right, thank you. Uh, and I know, I, I don't know if they walked in, but I know uh, Tracy Poe and uh, John Schumann were also uh, here. And okay, good. John Schumann's back there. Um, and did I miss anything? Oh, and Richard, yes, and Aaron. Okay, yes, thank you so much. Um, and Aaron Larder. So 
Uh, thank you. Uh, again, an incredible uh, team of uh, my board. And if you have any questions about sustainability and sustainable Tulsa, please go up and visit with them. Also, I want to thank I have an amazing team. Uh, we have Megan Hurley that helped put this together for us today, our Vincent Marketing Coordinator. Sarah Hicks back there in the back running the scorecard program and helping with lunch today. Uh, Jill Maud, our office specialist, making sure everybody sign in, have what they need. And I also want to welcome two of our interns today. Uh, we have uh, Bridget Wunsch. She is our scorecard in the school's uh, intern giveaway back there. So if you're interested in scorecard in the schools. And, and then we're also welcoming our new uh, marketing and events intern, Sophie uh, Zint. It's a Hintner. Uh, we're, okay, there she is. Okay, thank you. So let's give them all uh, a round of applause. Uh, reminding you, we do have composting for all of our events. Thank, thanks to Full Sun Composting, who is here today. Uh, woo -woo -woo. And uh, also to TCC for making it available for their staff and students. So uh, make sure that you put your stuff in the, the right uh, bins today. Um, so. Anyway, before we get started, though, I wanted just to share that our team had a chance to be at Green Biz uh, that was uh, in Scottsdale, Arizona, and we just got back around midnight last night, so we're still, we're still on the Green uh, Biz buzz, and uh, it was incredible, and it really is the intersection of business technology and sustainability, and it was really wonderful to uh, learn from these leaders that are globally connected, uh, but also to be affirmed that the, the work that we're doing, the community that we have that's focused on sustainability, that we're on the right trajectory, and we are uh, heading in the right direction with these tools, but there's still a lot left to do, and the theme that was affirmed there as well as uh, our theme for Sustainable Tulsa, there's a lot to do, but clearly there's a lot of us, and we need to work together to solve these problems. Their, their big theme uh, this year was that we need to break these silos uh, that uh, keep us from innovating and solving the problems that we have when it comes to business and sustainability. And they talked about ESGs and sustainable development goals, and, and we're going to be sharing that information and answering questions about that throughout the year because we want you to, to understand how these things intersect and, and how it's important, you know, how businesses are measuring their environmental, social justice, and, and how they're growing and, and how that is affecting their investors and, and what investors are wanting to know. And, um, and how businesses can affect their triple bottom line. And of course, we have our scorecard program. Uh, if you're a scorecard member or a coach, if you'll put up your hand just so that people can see the room full of uh, scorecard members. Uh, it's a, if you're interested in learning, definitely Sarah Hicks in the back can give you, uh, share with you about the program. Um, but it's a, a chance to help businesses really look at that triple bottom line of people, profit, and planet and how they can uh, make that motion forward. And some of us uh, are ready to go and some of us are just getting started and this tool is there for you. We have an incredible support of coaches that are trained to help you, guide you through that. So uh, anyway, we're, we're a lucky community, I think. So um, thank you all for your participation in Scorecard and, and the volunteer coaches that help to keep it going. I uh, wanted to um, also just uh, update you on just a couple other our upcoming events before we get started. Um, we have uh, our next event will be the B2B case for sustainability series. This is uh, where it will be at TU. It's a panel 8, 8 to uh, 10 a.m. And we'll be talking about going toward carbon neutrality. And, uh, you know, just being at Green Biz, everybody's still kind of figuring this out. And, uh, and so I uh, just wanted you to be aware that um, uh, we are going to be talking about that. We'll have a representative from Williams, um, from Integrity, and our own Rick Katarski from the zoo will be there uh, to help us kind of figure out what does this mean and what are some of the steps toward that. Because I think a lot of people are thinking about it. How do they get there? So we we're definitely want to help you through that. So if you're interested, uh, on the table or at the booth, there's these little cards that tell you about our B2Bs and our First Thursday. So please go and check those out. Uh, our next First Thursday, we're, we're typically here, if this is your first First Thursday, uh, we're here at TCC and we thank them for their um, support of our program. Occasionally they need this room for the things that they do, so we're, we, we travel a little bit. And we're adding some evening events. So our next one will actually be 
um, March 1st, and this event will be at New Era Fine Fermentations, and where the mine, who is working on a project for us to, to look at our scorecard, business scorecard, and how that could be an individual scorecard. So they've done a lot of research and development for us. We're, it's been a really great team, and so they've got some other questions they want to ask you. So anyway, please come and help with that and, kind of, and, and be a part of that. I think you'll enjoy that, and we'll have some information out. You have a chance to order food as well for that. And then our next one in April after that will actually be, it'll be for the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, uh, will be at the Gathering Place. So uh, we're really excited about that. They're really going to set it up to help it uh, help ease you in and out of that space if you're coming uh, for lunch uh, during work. So anyway, uh, look out for some information on that. We're excited to be partnering with them on that. So anyway, now we got to get on to... Uh, what's at hand here, which is uh, recycling. So um, I'm going to introduce each of the speakers. They will present for a few minutes, and then after they've all had a chance to present, we'll uh, invite all the booths to uh, tell us a little bit about why they're here and, and their role in recycling, and then we'll have a chance for some questions, and then I know that they all have agreed to stick around afterwards if you have more burning questions you didn't get answered. So. Um, First, I want to introduce Robert Pickens. He's been in the recycling industry for 32 years and has an ex extensive experience in facility operations, commercial, industrial, curbside uh, drop-off and recycling programs, commodity sales and marketing, MRF design, consulting and offset and mobile document shredding. Robert lives in Sand Springs and serves as the treasurer for the Oklahoma Recycling Association, OCRA, and is on the board, is a board member on the Oklahoma Indian Nations chapter of the Solid Waste Association of North America, SWANA. So uh, help me welcome Robert Pickens. This is you right here. All right, good afternoon, everybody. I was tasked with only 10 minutes to speak, and if anybody you know, if any of you guys know me well, uh, that's gonna be really difficult for me to do. So um, I wanted to show you this first picture here. This is Tulsa Recycle and Transfer. If you have a curbside recycling program or drop off at Mr. Murph, this is where it comes. We actually do recycle here in Tulsa. It is true, it's not folklore or urban legend. Um, this facility is a $7 million investment to us. Oh, sure. <laughs> Uh, it's a $7 million investment, and this system here processes the recyclables that come through and separate them back out. So in simplicity terms, if we were to bring an automobile in and disassemble all the parts from it, put it in boxes and ship it off, that's pretty much what this equipment does with the recyclables. They come in mixed, we separate them all back out, and then we uh, process them and ship them out to different buyers throughout the United States. So this is an overview of our facility. Um, I don't have my little clicker, but over here on this side here is our commercial line. So our commercial and industrial mixed recycling programs get processed over there. Over on the main system is where we handle all of our residential, and we do finish up uh, the smaller processing from our businesses. We process recyclables between 36,000 and 40,000 pounds per hour. They're coming through, so this isn't a slow process. Uh, we also take in 6.4 million pounds per month of recyclables. That's both on the residential side and our commercial side. We're servicing over 137,000 households here in the Tulsa metro area. And uh, we handle some of the largest businesses here in Tulsa. They're recyclables, generating it from all aspects. Even the maintenance areas, you can do recycling in maintenance areas as well, too. And we can help on that with American Waste Control. So uh, Megan asked me to briefly cover the whole instance with China, there's a lot of questions about that. And I'm just gonna kinda touch base on a couple things from there. So a lot of recyclables got shipped over to China. Well, in reality, 39% of recyclables um, went to China. So that's not quite as much as what some people would believe that would be. Most of those coming from the West Coast uh, from there. And with recyclables, once you separate them back out, we have to have specifications. So it's like when you go ahead and buy Cheerios, you want Cheerios when you get home and pour them in the bowl. You don't want cornflakes. Well, it's the same thing with recyclables. If you are buying milk jugs, you want milk jugs at the other end. You don't want pop bottles or you don't want trash. And uh, so these specifications are designed to make sure that the buyer and seller are communicating properly. Well, we didn't have some of that occurring with China. They ran on the same specifications. 
Um, but their regulations over in China were a little bit different, and they set up a lot of small shops um, that would take in, uh, material in. And they also set up some paper mills. When they didn't quite adhere to those specs and they kept taking material in, and some of that material didn't quite meet the specifications, but they continued to take it. Eventually, their government said, hey, stop, wait a minute. We can't take this stuff in. We're starting to have some issues here because uh, we're taking in a lot of waste that shouldn't be coming in this direction. And it wasn't happening just here in the United States. It was also happening from Europe and other parts. So they stepped back, said, stop. We don't want to do this anymore. So that pushed recyclables back into the United States that were going to China. Pretty simple overall, but what had happened from about 2005 through 2019 is that the infrastructure within the United States continued to dwindle down as those recyclables were shipped specifically on the coastal states. Paper mills shut down, plastic processors had to shut their doors, so the infrastructure went away. If you were shipping recyclables domestically the entire time, you were meeting specifications and you were doing fine, but for those that were shipping export, um, they had a big surprise when China had to stop taking that. They had to push that back inward. And all of a sudden, you had a larger supply than demand. For So for some of these uh, areas on the coastal states, they had to go ahead and uh, landfill some recyclables, or they were trying to find other places that can take them. Now, the good news is here in the United States, we're building that infrastructure back up. We have new paper mills coming online. We have plastic processors coming online. So that is slowly but surely building back up, but it's not something you can do quickly. Paper mills take at least two years to get fully operational and built from ground zero. So that's gonna take a little bit of time. So we're hoping to see some improvement in 2020, but it probably won't be until close to 2021 before we really start seeing that demand uh, start to catch up with the supply that's out there. But this slide, for example, will show you that in 2010, we had about 56% of pot bottles and water bottles were being exported. Now, that would be China, but it also could be some other South Asian countries, some that could be the Europe as well. But in 2019, nearly all those pot bottles stay here in the United States. Some of that was because of the China ban, but actually more of it has to do with that the infrastructure is being built to take these pot bottles and water bottles back here domestically. So we're starting to internalize that usage from there. So that's actually good news. So here on this map, what I wanted to show you is once again, Northwest, um, the West Coast, Southwest, those states there were impacted the most by these current um, recycling bans out of China. South Central and North Central, we moved a lot of our recyclables to domestic markets, so you don't see as much news about recycling programs shuttering uh, from there. Also, the other thing with the media, as you guys pretty much know, if it bleeds, it leads. And anytime you have a recycling program that's shutting down, it's going to catch major headlines and news. But you don't hear as much when you hear about a recycling program starting up. It doesn't catch very much news at all. So it's just an example of that. But anytime a program shuts down, and it could be in a small rural town, and it's going to make headlines uh, throughout the state from there. But whenever that program started back up, it might have only been caught in a local paper. So there's kind of a, a difference in what you see out there overall. Oh, go back one. There we go. So here in Oklahoma, we've got some interesting things. So Oklahoma ranks third in the country for having the most manufacturers that use recyclables to produce a product or the packaging that that product goes into. So at American Waste Control, 95% of the recyclables that come through our facilities stay in the state of Oklahoma. So we're supporting the Oklahoma economy and Oklahoma jobs because of that. We have this infrastructure built in our own state. Very few people know about it. We're generating 5,000 jobs and a payroll over 200 million. Over a million of that is just TRT alone, the payroll that we pay our people for recycling. So it's alive and well in Oklahoma. We do have some challenges when it comes to some plastics because we don't have a lot of that infrastructure here in Oklahoma. But when it comes to a lot of the other commodities that we're dealing with, we've been shipping domestically for years, a lot of that's staying right here, being made back into new products. So that's great news for us. Um, also, too, part of that 6.4 million pounds that we do isn't even 50% of what we can process at Tulsa Recycle and Transfer. So with that, Broken Arrow will be coming on recycling soon. That's very exciting to see that community come on. That will just push us to about the 50, 55% mark only. Our facility that you saw earlier is actually designed and able to handle all recyclables for the entire Tulsa metro area and even outside of that. We handle recyclables um, even out of Bartlesville and Oak Mogi come in here already. 
So one of the challenges that you deal with when you're trying to talk about recycling is contamination. And when it comes to that, one of the big things is that we're dealing with multiple generations that we have to educate. They all learn differently. They all do things differently. So part of that challenge is to get the message across. Well, when it comes to school age kids, we can get that message. They're gonna be great recyclers because they're kind of our captive audience. At Tulsa Recycle and Transfer, we conduct tours. So you can go to feedmrmurf.com, click on tours. You can set up a tour and come visit the MRF and see how, exactly how it works and, um, and process the materials there. But for adults, you're kind of that missing segment that we really want to get out and get a hold of. Why? Because you're making most of the purchases. You're buying those items. You really need to understand how the recycling program in your community works. So with part of that, this is what we accept in the recycling. Now, this holds true no matter what community you're in, whether you're in Tulsa, whether you're in Jinx, whether you're in uh, Bixby, whether you're in Glenpool. And we handle the curbside recycling for Jinx, Glenpool, and Bixby. So this is what we accept here. The items on the bottom is we focus on six items mostly. This is what we see coming through our recycling facility every day, the six most common items um, every day that we come through. And that's what we focus on. If we can get folks to focus on these six, keep them out, we can keep the recyclables much cleaner. So one way that we do that is we get that message out early, but here's the three areas inside your home you need to recycle from. 80% of the items you put in your recycle cart will generate from these three areas inside your home. So your kitchen, your laundry, and your bathroom, okay? The areas we do not want to place anything in a recycle bin or a recycle cart in is the garage, shed, and yard. Why? Because those items that I showed earlier, tanglers, um, also, uh, containers and things from these areas are usually going to contain a household pollutant, a flammable, or a combustible item. Even though it's empty, we get a lot of small propane bottles from camping. Those still have residual gas in it, and they can still get caught in our equipment and explode. So these are just some of the messages that we do to try to keep it simple and easy overall. And just a simple message we do on social media. And again, both these items are recyclable. One you can put in your cart. But one, you need to take a little extra time to take off and take to a grocery store, convenience center, the Met when it comes to electronics, natural evolution. So they're still recyclable items, but we just don't want them in a recycled cart. So we want to make sure you, you know where you can take those items and give you as much information as possible. And we have a message, when in doubt, check it out. Go to feedmrmurf.com. If you don't want to check it out, throw it out. It's better to place the item in the trash than it is to place it in a recycled container and not have it be right. Because chances are, if it cannot be recycled, we're gonna dispose of it. And that cost for us to be able to handle and dispose of that is gonna be much higher than if you just placed it in the waste. And we wanna be able to keep recycling alive and we wanna be able to keep it clean so that the people that we sell our recyclables to want our recyclables. Thank you. Thank you, and I mean, thank you so much. I know you had m much more that you could have shared with us because you just are a plethora of information. So I know he'll be able to stick around. Thank you so much, Robert, for explaining and kind of clarifying some of that for us. Uh, next, our uh, presenter is uh, Donnie Henson, and uh, he uh, has been an env environmental compliance supervisor over compliance and enforcement in stormwater department at the city of Tulsa. He's also the supervisor over the household pollutant collection facility, which we'll hear from him about that today. And he's worked for the city of Tulsa for 37 years in the environmental field, and he holds a degree in law enforcement, and in his spare time, he enjoys traveling and golf. And I, and I have to say, I've had the pleasure of knowing Donnie and actually Graham for 25 plus years now. We work together in water quality, so it's really great to have Donnie here today. So please help welcome Donnie Henson. Good afternoon. Um, I'm glad to be here, and I, hopefully I can give you some information about our household pollutant collection facility. Um, what we do at, at the facility is we collect household pollutants. So people uh, in the city, citizens of Tulsa can come to our facility for free and bring us their household pollutants. And we get uh, a myriad of things, but now we are a regional facility, so outside communities can also come into our facility. Some of them are in conjunction with the Met, and we do have uh, a new city that is, uh, had a contract with us to start 
bringing uh, their citizens household pollutants. Um, when we opened our facility in uh, January uh, 1st of 2016, it's a permanent facility. We used to have these at the fairgrounds, um, but now we have a facility that's open about 104 days a year. So we looked at it and we realized we're getting a lot of stuff that we can possibly recycle. Um, some of the uh, stuff that we get in, we get used motor oil. So we looked at what can we do with some of this oil. We get, in case you didn't know, there's good oil and there's bad used oil. The bad used oil has water, leaves, stuff in it that we really can't do anything with. So we, we got a contractor that wants that oil. It doesn't charge us to take it now, and they take it and they uh, refurbish it. They also do antifreeze. So we get a lot of antifreeze. They, that's a 300-gallon tank of antifreeze. They'll come clean, get that taken care of, and, and uh, reuse it. They also, we have uh, Brooks Grease. Brooks Grease comes out and takes our cooking oil and our grease, and then they take it back to their facility in North Tulsa, and then they use it uh, for other things. So uh, if you have cooking oils, greases, we'll take those also. The city of Tulsa has a large fleet of vehicles. So we have a group called EMD, and they're an equipment maintenance division. And they, this is when I'm, I'm talking about good oil, this is the oil I'm talking about. They get change of the oils out of our fleet, they save that oil, they put it in 55 gallon drums. We purchased a used oil heater. This is a picture of the used oil heater that we got. So. What we do is when they uh, get those barrels filled, we get in touch with them, we come and get that oil, we use it to heat our facility. We have a 9,000 square foot facility, so this right here is, is a recycling part of the oil out of our city vehicles. Uh, we also get used good oil from citizens, and we also do it that way. Uh, this is the 250 gallon tank that goes with the heater so we fill that up uh, about once uh, every three weeks and use that to heat the facility during the winter time. And it's, uh, it, it's worked out real well. We also do, uh, we have a paint can crusher. So when you bring us in uh, oil-based paints, we would crush those uh, cans down to the size of a Frisbee and then Borg Steel takes that stuff and melts it down. So we have a big dumpster that we would put those in and uh, they would come take the big dumpster and melt that down and recycle it. One of the things that we have that is really good for recycling is our swap shop. And um, it's not like a, um, you go take your cardboard and your plastic stuff, you bring us household pollutants that you don't want at your house, but they're been barely used or they're brand new, you just wanna get rid of them. Well, it costs us to dispose of it. Let's put it on the shelf for somebody else to come and get. So it's free. You can come into our facility and get up to five items for free. So we're kind of semi-recycling it through the, the citizens. So one person doesn't want this uh, fertilizer, the next person does. So that's a good way of recycling there. And our swap shop is getting more and more popular. We have over 2,000 items on the shelves. As you can see, there's different, different items from uh, fertilizers, pesticides, uh, car, car products, oils, paints, everything that you can imagine that you can go into a store that you could pay money for, we probably have it on our shelf for free. Um, one of the things we do also recycle is car batteries. We actually, sell those to interstate batteries. They, we collect car batteries, motorcycle batteries, and we, um, we box them up and then uh, they come and get them and, and recycle them. Um, mercury thermostats. Covanta uh, was, is uh, partnered with us, so we collect mercury thermostats and then they will take them and, and uh, recycle them, for, get the mercury out and take care of them. We do not, we're not a recycling center as in the Mets recycling center, so I don't, I don't promote for glass or you bring us your plastics or, or cardboard, but when people come in and bring us stuff, they put it in cardboard or plastic containers. If we take the oil out of a plastic container, we recycle that. We put it into a uh, dumpster and it's being recycled. 
It's going to his facility, I'm sure. So, um, but if you bring us glass and all that, we're going to we're going to send you to the men, uh, to the recycling center. We don't collect that. Uh, but if you bring us household uh, pollutants in them, then we'll take those uh, containers and then we will recycle them through. Um, same thing with the, uh, the cardboard and plastic. So we have a five yard dumpster in our facility. Everything is inside, nothing is out in the weather. And we fill that up every week with cardboards, plastics that goes to the uh, recycling center. Um, it is, it's been a uh, great thing for the citizens. Everybody that comes through seems to enjoy it. Uh, we've been very, uh, very good with uh, our, our pollutants. Last year, we uh, disposed of over 231,000 pounds in a facility that's only open 104 days a year. Um, so it's, it's been very good. A lot of our oils, uh, paints, oil-based paints, is all used for um, butane. So what they do is they, they take, this, take the barrels and they burn it for, for fuel. Covanta, all of our garbage goes to Covanta to be burned. Nothing is put in the uh, uh, landfill. So they use it for fuel. So they burn it down and they sell that to uh, the steam to the oil um, refinery over there. So it's, uh, it's been pretty good. Like I said, we are not a recycling center per se, but we do recycle. So, all right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Donnie. Uh, I saw a few people go, oh, I can go there and pick up some stuff. So yeah, that's great information to share with the community and another opportunity for uh, recycling here. So, uh, okay, our next speaker is uh, Graham Brannon. And uh, Graham Brannon, let's see, what do we have to say about you? Um, no, uh, Graham, uh, he holds a bachelor's degree in geology and petroleum engineering uh, from the University of Tulsa. After 15 years in the oil industry, Graham worked for 20 years at the city of Tulsa in environmental protection. His environmental passion began at the first Earth Day, which was 50 years ago, and grew uh, in 1972 when he led the Crow Creek cleanup at Zinc Park in 1972 uh, at age 12. He came back to this park and, and this creek when he became a Blue Thumb Monitor volunteer in 1998, and he still supports conservation in this watershed. Graham accepted the uh, executive director position for the Metropolitan Environmental Trust, the Met, in 2015, and he actively supports the Tulsa community and a variety of organizations and efforts, including Graham put here a groupie for Corey and Sustainable Tulsa. Hey. Graham, back at you. Um, I, again, I've had the pleasure of knowing Graham and Donnie, and actually uh, also Robert for so many years. So we have an incredible group here. Let's welcome Graham Graham. Thanks. OK. Well, I'm really happy to be here and, and uh, the opportunity to speak with such an incredible group. Um, I, you know, you look at this crew here in front, you go, wow. This business really takes its toll. Um, but uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I think, you know, the good news is that a lot, there's a lot of young folks getting into this, and it's a more diverse group, too. So, um, so yeah, I think some speakers might uh, perk it up a little bit as years go by. But, but uh, anyway, so I'm happy to be here, and, and I'll try to run through this fast because I know you all have questions. Um, what I wanted to point out here, this is a pretty busy slide, um, but it, it, I love it, so I love graphs and stuff. So anyway, this kind of shows you uh, the piece of the pie, and you can uh, look at the different <laughs> things. I circled in green the materials that are taken, their traditional recyclables primarily. There's a few things in plastics that might not be uh, glass, that kind of stuff, but most of that stuff is very recyclable, and at home, we should be recycling it, okay? So that's a big piece of that pie. If you look at that, that's a little over 50%. Uh, then the other big circle I have around food and yard trimmings, that's 28.3%, I think. Um, that's a huge, that's really an untapped resource that we need to get after, okay? So that stuff should not be, um, you know, wasted. That's a, that's a resource as far as I'm concerned. So if you add those two up, it's about 81%. That's a huge, huge piece of the pie. 
So um, there's a lot to be done, and that food and yard trimmings area is an area that we probably, most of us, can improve on. I like leaving it in my yard as much as possible, uh, and then if, if not, uh, find another source for it. I love the Tulsa's Greenway site, fantastic place. If you, don't, if you need uh, mulch, um, I never buy it at the store, sorry, um, Home Depot, but uh, I always uh, get it out there. I've, I've probably used 30, 40 truck loads and, uh, and you never have enough of this stuff. So anyway, as far as recycling, I think Robert touched on it just a little bit, but uh, as Bob Dylan says, uh, a hard rain's gonna fall. Um, and that's kind of where we are right now. And it's been that way. Actually, I started about five years ago at the Met and it was pretty bad. And then it got a little worse and now it's even worse. So uh, I'm not sure what that says, but it's, it's a little tough right now. But we are recycling in Tulsa, like Robert said, it is happening in Tulsa, we can say with confidence. And I wanna get that word out because I've seen, heard so many people that uh, get uh, other messages that aren't true, especially I can speak to Tulsa, okay? So what I'd like to get across is, you saw that huge piece of the pie, so let's keep it simple, and I made this one up, let's see, keep it simple and strategic with recycling, so just focus on the main stuff, okay? The other stuff, don't, don't sweat too much about. People like you all, most people in this room, are very conscientious, and so they just, people just go through all sorts of angst about it. It's like, give yourself a break, do the good stuff, the main stuff, and, uh, and it'll be all right. And maybe get somebody else to do it too, and you're gonna be way ahead. So keep it simple, and, uh, and we'll, we'll all come out ahead that way. As far as what the Met does, we have recycling centers around the region, so we're not just in Tulsa. Um, right now, we have um, three active in Tulsa, and we are um, getting ready to open up, reopen our East Tulsa Center, and I'm so excited. We don't quite have it inked in yet, but it looks like it will be at Plaza Santa Cecilia uh, there at 21st and Garnett, and so excited about that partnership. So we're, we're hoping to open there um, by the end of the month. That's the, that's the hope. As far as our centers, we take a lot of different products, I focus mainly on those uh, light green items. Those are the items. Some of those, are, uh, Donnie mentioned, that they take at their facility. Uh, we take some of those items. Um, so batteries, cooking oil, motor oil, plastic bags, that's the big no-no in your blue cart or your curbside cart. Don't put those in there, it causes all sorts of problems in, in Robert's world. Um, we take antifreeze, e-waste, electronics, huge, huge thing there. Uh, wine corks we do a little bit, and some eyeglasses. We get those out to folks that need them. So, uh, so it's a kind of a neat, neat little uh, add-on. So our centers are, we have night drops. So we're basically open 24-7, 365, okay? Um, there's a few items we really don't want to take at, the, at off hours, like liquids generally, but, uh, but we take these items all the time and it's very convenient. So it's a little different. All of our services, the three of us, we offer have differences. And so some, uh, like Robert, he can handle so much more than we can handle. So he handles huge amounts, curbside programs, okay? We can handle smaller amounts, keep it separate, that kind of thing. And then Donnie uh, handles the, the big bad stuff. So, so, and that's really important to get out of your house and, uh, and make sure it's done properly. This is a little bit of Tulsa's campaign. The folks over, uh, over that, that direction, um, the solid waste, the uh, TulsaRecycles.com. This is kind of their new campaign, Recycle This, Not That. And uh, it's a pretty s uh, simple campaign. And this is what we, again, keep it simple. So, uh, and this is basically what should and shouldn't be going in your blue carts. That's what they're trying to get, the message, is to try to keep this, this simple. It's not as hard as people try to make it. We partner with uh, City of Tulsa's Household Pollutant Collection Facility and uh, but kind of what we bring to the table is one, we promote like I'm doing right now, but uh, we also have all of our communities outside of Tulsa, Tulsa County uh, and the towns like Jinx, Bixby, Broken Arrow, et cetera. Um, we are a good avenue for their citizens to go to their facility. So they call us, we make appointments, we walk them through it so they know what to expect and, and boom, they have, the appointment system is fantastic. People complain about appointments, they shouldn't because you don't have to wait, it's awesome. So they're open on Wednesdays and Saturdays, and it's a great system. So we have a great relationship with them. 
We also uh, lend uh, recycling bins. So we do, uh, we'll, we'll drop them at an event. Um, we do all sorts of, make all sorts of arrangements for that. And we do long-term loans for nonprofits like schools, et cetera. Um, so they can get bins in their classrooms and we'll do education around it too. So the Met has a full-time educator. She's sitting right over there and uh, um, she is great. And uh, so she's uh, able to do this. And I'm happy to say that we're budgeting a full-time, her position to be full-time with benefits starting in July. It's a big deal. So we're pretty excited about that. So I really committed to it right there, didn't I? Yeah. Uh, so none of my board's sitting here at the moment, but, but uh, they'll hear about it. And, uh, and my next meeting is Thursday, and we'll talk about it there. But I, I'm pretty excited about it. But you've got to be a little bold sometimes. And uh, anyway, we do events also. Smoke alarm and fire extinguisher collection event coming up March 28th. We'll get all this information out. You can follow us on social media, et cetera. Uh, where it's a pretty neat little event, something special with those smoke alarms. You want to get rid of the old ones, get new ones, replace them. Batteries don't always do it. Every 10 years at least, you got to replace those. Big spring clean, we're working with Cox Media Group on that. Really excited to have that partnership, and we're taking a number of items at that March 7th. I know I have limited time here, so I'm going to hit this. And this one we're just really excited about, our 22nd annual Enviro Expo. It happens to fall on on Wednesday, Food Truck Wednesday at Guthrie Green. It's our 22nd annual, April 22nd, 50th anniversary, all those kind of things. Planets all are aligning, should be great. We're gonna be running trolleys from the Deco District and uh, have some great support. This butterfly tent that, uh, that um, One Oak's gonna help us with, um, you can take strolls through this butterfly tent. We're really excited about that. And we're trying to get some kids from, other, from schools to come down too. So, it will be a lot of fun, live music, everything. So uh, that is Earth Day. Also, I, I would be remiss if I don't mention our great workers. We contract with agencies that employ adults with developmental disabilities. Um, and, and these folks that are standing there by me, um, they were all getting their award for 15 plus years of service at our recycling centers. We have some, yeah. <laughs> It's just really a, a pleasure that I have to, have to play any role at all in that. And I love working with those folks too. And I always call them the experts. When I'm going through recyclables with them, uh, I ask them questions and they, they inform me how it's supposed to be done. So I really like that. But anyway, that's all I have. Thank you. so much. And now we're going to pass the mic uh, uh, so you can hear about the other booths that are here and then we'll have time for a few questions. So, yeah. Hi, Carrie Rowland from Public Service Company of Oklahoma. We offer energy efficiency rebates for your home or business. We also recycle. So the small business program, we do have a partner that takes lamps and uh, we also have in our terms and conditions that the contractors are responsible for recycling spent material. So that's my update. Hi, I'm Allie from the Met, and we have all of our um, good recycling information up here. Come and see us. We've got some of the things he had up there, different flyers and our directories up here. Hi, I'm Janelle Hartwell with the um, City of Tulsa Streets and Stormwater Department. Um, I am a senior environmental monitoring tech and I work in the household pollution collection facility. I basically go to different businesses and ask them to make sure they clean up their property so it doesn't get into our storm drains and into our creeks. <laughs> Hello, uh, Greg Phillips with Covana Tulsa Renewable Energy. Um, energy from waste facility, uh, more than likely your material is coming to our facility for a proper disposal. Uh, Josh Noel with the City of Tulsa and Tulsa Recycles. If you have any questions about what can in, uh, can go in your blue recycling cart, come see me. Good afternoon. I'm Joe Hooper with the Muscogee Creek Nation Recycle Center Environmental Services. Uh, we do recycling specifically, you know, cardboard, aluminum, plastics, papers. Uh, we service our uh, communities throughout our um, 
jurisdiction, which is seven counties worth. So uh, we do basically what the Covanta people do and the Met. We're just a smaller version of it. So if you have any questions of how we operate, uh, we get a lot of our ideas from you guys here in Tulsa. So thank you. Hi there. I'm Paul Ross, Vice President of American Waste Control. Robert, you did great. You made me <laughs> proud. Fantastic. Um, of course, if you have any recycling needs or questions, we're here to answer them. But I'm also here to talk about Iron Man 2020. Uh, it's a triathlon. I'm not competing in it. But it's been, uh, Tulsa has been selected as the host city this May. And uh, they need, we need 100 volunteers to help make it the most sustainable triathlon Iron Man has had. Because out of all the cities in the United States, Tulsa was selected. So it's a huge honor. So thank you. Come see us if you're interested to learn more. Thank you. We're well, I'm happy to take all their banana peels because they're going to be eating a lot of bananas. <laughs> um, my name is Natalie. I'm with Full Sun Composting, and we provide pickup service um, to residents and businesses in Tulsa. We uh, compost what we haul, and then um, our compost is for sale at Grog's Green Barn. Oh. I'm going to. Okay. We have six giveaways today, guys. So if you haven't put a business card or your name in the drawing back there, Jill will be happy to take your information. So make sure you get that. We're going to start with questions. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Right here. <laughs> and pass the mic to her. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hold on. Uh, Sophie. Sophie. Give me the mic. Okay. Here. Hi, I had a quick question. So Robert, you said you don't want anything that's coming out of your shed, garage, yard, uh, but Don, you had mentioned that whenever you guys empty the, the oil that you recycle those containers. Do you guys do that separately? Is that separated from the normal plastic stream? What we do is um, we have a trough that we let them sit there and all the liquids drain out and when it's all drained out and they're clean enough to go to the recycling bin, that's what we do with them. Great question. Let me, let me step on that one more thing. The reason we don't say we'll accept oil containers from there, because I'll get half full oil containers and quarter full, so I'll get contamination. So if it's coming from our industrial customers or like coming from the cities, they know how to prep it prior for a 24, you know, 24 hour drain. If somebody asks me, if a citizen asks me, I'll tell them that's how you do it and then our end users will take it, but they have to discharge that water after they wash and grind that plastic, and it has to meet specifications. And as funny as it sounds, because plastics are made from petroleum, but that has to be clean, clean material, clean water. Great. Uh, any other questions? Right here. I see from one of the great flyers that uh, plastic cups are something that can be recycled. It, Quick Trip is such a great entity. It'd be wonderful if they would start having recyclable, recycling uh, you know, facilities there where it could be picked up and these cups could be recycled. It's a huge amount that goes in the trash. If anybody knows him and would like to talk to him. Robert, I know you probably take certain cups and things like that. Can you comment? Yeah, we can take the stadium cups, the Quick Trip cups, come and go cups, those items from there. So. The thing about convenience stores is actually more recyclables leave than stay on site. So while you could have people stopping and getting fuel and dropping off, that percentage is very, very small. The bulk of that actually comes home with you. And at that point is where we want to allow you to say, hey, put that in the recycle bin. Don't throw that away because you can recycle that if it says QT on it or come and go. The city of Tulsa has um, a litter program. I'm over the litter program too. Uh, Janelle Hartwell over there that was talking a little bit ago is uh, my litter person. Uh, we are in conversations with Quick Trip about partnering about litter because um, as you all know, you, when you see litter, it's usually a Walmart bag or a Quick Trip cup. They understand, but they're, they also know, as, as Robert just said, that those, those items leave their facilities and it's, the citizens that drop them on the ground and the education is the key so we're working on that they're wanting to partner with us so we're in the beginning stages of that we're not there yet but we're we're looking but quick trips well aware of what they want to be a, a good uh, um, 
business and, and get rid of that footprint of litter in the city of Tulsa? Yeah, I, I would add also that um, the, the public, um, knowing that the public is interested in these things goes a long way and in a nice way, uh, drop them a line, those kind of things and, and let people know, hey, we'd love to see you partner with city of Tulsa, whatever it may be to get that done. And of course, if you're a crazy uh, re um, reuse guy like me, I bring my uh, insulated cup there and, uh, and I pay less for it. So, um, and it, I, nobody seems to really notice, which is a little <laughs> frustrating, but uh, anyway, so yeah, that's another thing obviously you can do. All right, great. Uh, question right here. So there's a lot going on right now about air quality and I'd like to know what we can do with you, Covana. What can we do to not put so much in our gray tubs that come to you and end up negatively impacting what comes out of your smokestack? So how can we be better citizens? We don't see you up here on the table, but I think we do a lot of stupid stuff that makes your life miserable, don't we? We, we have just a couple more minutes for questions about the recycling with this panel here. If we can go ahead, you got One thing I'd hit on that, and I don't want to speak for Greg because he knows his business a lot better than I know, but, but obviously as much as you can divert, I think he will agree with that, as much as you can divert by recycling, reusing, getting materials that you use up, all those kind of things, that helps. So diversion is your first kind of thing to, to do. Then. If it goes to Covanta, then you can talk about how they can handle it. But diversion's the, the first step. Um, one last question. Uh, maybe a comment and then ask for the panel's uh, comments on this, that a lot of cities around the country are starting to pass ordinances to ban plastic bags because they're difficult to recycle and they mess things up. But our, our Oklahoma State Legislature has enacted a law that forbids cities from doing this statewide a preemptive law. Would you, anybody like to comment on that and just? Well, I'll jump in. Uh, I, I don't have to worry about my job at the moment. So uh, <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, that preemption, uh, I do know that the chamber and type rows came out against that preemption law. I hate preemption laws. They, you know, why can't a local community, uh, you know, settle their own affairs? But uh, yeah, that's, that was unfortunate. But there's money there that uh, perhaps a single person doesn't have. But, but hopefully that could get overturned. But it was not a popular thing around here. Normal, normally when we see those programs, uh, when, when something's like House Bill 1002 goes into place, usually there's, there's an interest. Something started it, like down in Norman. Uh, they started looking at the plastic bags. They said it's a big problem for our community with litter. Um, everything's out. So they started that ball rolling. And as soon as you do that, you're going to get interest involved saying, hey, we, we don't want this momentum getting started on us. Um, the single-use plastic bag is a great vessel to carry your products from point a to point B, but there are multiple recycling programs throughout our community that you can take them back. So it, it all, everything focuses back to one thing, whether you talk about air quality, or the, it comes back to education, it talks about people, can you take a few minutes of your day and do the right thing, or the next time you go back to a Walmart, remember they take the plastic bags, so don't throw them in the trash, just take them back to them. Um, we would have a lot less problems overall. And it's a matter of just getting people to take a little bit extra time out of their life to do the right thing for the programs that exist. Because here in Tulsa, many programs that exist, Household of Pollutants, programs Graham provides, and what we provide overall. 80% of the items inside your home can be recycled. It's the largest percentage. So how does less go to Covanta? Recycle more. On a national average, it's 32%. Is it? 32%. That's it. The best countries in the world just hit over 50% to put it in perspective, because everybody thinks Europe's all that thing. And it's, <laughs> it's really, they struggle with the same things we do here in the United States. It's just that they mandated things and fine you and, and do other things there to get their message across. But still, only 50-something percent, I think it's 56 percent um, mm. in Switzerland. That's it. And uh, you know, South Korea has the highest rate overall. 
but it, we have a long ways to go. But it's, it's people just taking that little bit of time out of their life to do the right thing to get it away. It's going to impact somebody someday, somewhere. Wow. Thank you. And I guess that's kind of the, the theme is that, um, Graham mentioned it as well, it's like, incur do your part and encourage at least one more person to recycle with you. Um, my mother-in-law here is in the audience, and she is the go-to person within her network on what do I do with this recycling. So, Phyllis, thank you for your recycling that you do. And, and, and that really that is, is in your community, your friend group, your, your family, somebody, uh, you might be able to encourage them to just increase the recycling efforts, kind of understand, don't put the plastic bags in there and things like that for, in your, your recycling bin. So uh, I think that's, that's kind of the theme that I've kind of taken away here is educate yourself on what's out there. And, and we will uh, we'll, we'll get with the panelists here on some of the slides that they have that we might be able to share on social media because I know they went through them pretty quickly and there was a lot of information on them. And so we'll, we'll get those up and available and I'm sure and we'll link to their sites too where they probably have more information available to answer those questions so so much information but we're gonna we're gonna wrap up here we do have uh, a couple uh, gifts that uh, our members and our sponsors and supporters have brought by so what do we have Megan well we have this wonderful notebook from Cherokee, Cherokee Nation thank you thank you and we have a Met bag from Tulsa Met <laughs> thank you it's got what oh and it's it's got a lot of stuff in oh, it. All right. okay. I think there's like a scarf and there's like wintery, uh, or is it new right. stuff? Ah. Oh. Ooh. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna start. And then we've got a couple of bags of goodies from uh, Muskogee Creek Nation. Thank and you. then we have a sustainable Tulsa mug, mug right over there. Yeah. Okay. So yes, have have Robert do it. Okay, Robert, <laughs> you're gonna pick the first one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda Wander. Amanda? Come on down. Come on down. All right. Let's see. And we'll let you pick which one you want. OK. So. Let's see. Let's pick another You're one here. You're picking out. So we have mug. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Come on up. Yeah. This one, this one, and then these three are the same. Yeah. OK. okay. Who's next? Who's next? Don? Yeah, there's a lot of Maria Lewis, are you still here? Yay! Perfect. Right. And then you right. just get to pick whichever you want up here. Graham. Good. Perfect. And I have Katie Smith. Yay! Okay, cool. Okay, there you go. and also there's little notebooks in these bags here too, so. Okay, let's see. Mike McDonald, come on down. Oh, yay! <laughs> I'll pull one. Jessica Gulo. Yay! <laughs> and one more. Jeremy Adkins. Hey. Okay. Gosh. All right. Thank you so much for donating uh, these lovely gifts for our guests today. And, um, and thank you so much for being here and wanting to understand this whole recycling uh, community. Uh, again, thank you to our panelists, Robert, Don, and, and Graham. And let's give them another round of applause. And again, thank you to our sponsors, PSO and Carrie Rowland with our board is here today. Appreciate her being here. Adamantane Energy, American Waste Control, Cavanta, Grog Green Barn, The Met, One Oak, Save Our Stream, Spirit Air Systems, TCC, Center for Creativity, and PS Wind Choice. Thank you. We'll see you next month. Okay. All right.